Uh, boys need role models, but what happens when boys cannot find a male role model, such as a strong father or uncle or grandfather? What happens is then that screenwriters and feminist women take over and they begin designing role models for boys that are absolutely destructive for them and their psychological development. I'm speaking to you as a philosopher and I want to warn you and society of what happens when boys take after the wrong role models. Almost eight years ago or so, I was hiking along the Kungsleden, the King's Trail in northern Sweden, crossing a good section of Europe's last wilderness. Then, in one of these log cabins, I met a bunch of people. One of them was a young man who told me the following story, that he had been hiking along these desolate places for almost a month, and that he was now thinking of going to East Asia, probably China or Hong Kong, where he said he wanted to join a monastery, one of those Shaolin temples where they teach you Kung Fu. I asked him a simple question. I leaned forward and I asked, Excuse me, are you perhaps an orphan? And the young man said, Yeah, how did you know I was an orphan? And I said, Well, the story you just told me of the things that you are doing and that you want to do is the opening scene to the movie Batman Begins, where Christopher Nolan takes on the role of the caped crusader. I immediately understood that this young man had modeled his psychology after the male role model of Batman from the movie he must have seen when he was a kid. But he didn't know. He didn't realize this. Batman, of course, was also an orphan who, in the, in the opening scenes of Batman Begins, travels to these desolate places and then joins a monastery to learn Kung Fu. And this isn't the only example that I found. Uh, in my own life, for example, as a boy, uh, growing up with an absent alcoholic father who certainly was not a role model, uh, he was a weak father in this respect, and also no uncles or grandfathers could stand in for him to offer me a better role model, I began to look up to the character of Charlton Heston in the original Planet of the Apes movie. Charlton Heston plays this leader on a new planet, which later they find out is Earth. Uh, and he is very self-deprecating. He lowers himself. He basically criticizes himself very much. And I began to do the same thing. And I've been doing that for almost 20 years of my life until I watched that movie again. And I realized to my own shock what I had been doing all this time, I'd been trying to model myself after a completely fictional character and trying to be more like that fake scripted person. I have met other men who modeled themselves after Superman, after Robocop even. Even myself as a teenager, I wanted to be like Robocop. I wanted to be a cyborg. I wanted to merge myself with a machine. That's completely insane if you think about it for a moment. I also looked up to the Terminator robot as it was played in uh, Judgment Day by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Can you imagine that a teenager wants to be like a mass murdering killing machine, a Terminator who has no feelings whatsoever and isn't really a man because he's not human. But that's what happens. That's what happens when you grow up in a household with no strong male role model. And even though in my case, um, our mother was quite dominant in the household, she was by no means a model that I could aspire to be one day. I naturally looked for substitute role models that I could find in, as a kid in the X-Men cartoons and as a teenager in the Hollywood movies. I also looked at uh, Indiana Jones, for example, played by Harrison Ford. Um, the problem is that a lots of boys nowadays, even growing up in single households, meaning raised by their mothers, they have no choice. They don't even have a father nearby. They have no choice but to model themselves after the Hollywood actors or cartoons or whatever nonsense you find in the media. And this is extremely problematic because all these characters that these boys modeled themselves after, they did so without any proper guidance. Uh, the characters on screen are scripted. They are written by screenwriters who have their own motives. And I believe we should safely assume that screenwriters, 
especially the ones who write successful movies, are certainly acutely aware of this fact that they are influencing a generation of boys by presenting them with certain role models. And I understand the same applies to women. Women who don't have a female role model have the same problem. But in this video, I'm discussing the boy's problem because that's the one I am familiar with. Now imagine even in our time where radical feminists are either paying screenwriters or are writing the screenplays themselves where they want to create males and show you how a real modern man is supposed to be like, uh, effeminate and timid. I've noticed this in the latest uh, Lord of the Rings installment, the one you could see on, uh, on Amazon, Amazon Prime. I don't even know what it's called because I don't watch it. But I watched a trailer where I saw uh, two men almost fleeing in fear of a woman who simply for entering the scene. And that is what they're trying to do. They're, they're trying to rewrite men as the effeminate sex and they're trying to rewrite women as somehow uh, uber masculine, much more masculine than women naturally want to be. Should we as a society really let Hollywood screenwriters, even the sickest, most degenerate weirdos, let them write the role models for our boys, especially in a time where there are so few real men and so few strong fathers and so many boys growing up in a single parent household, right? Should we really allow TV and Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime to to shape our psychological landscape because we're going to be stuck with this for the next half century or more if we don't do something about it right now.